Hello again. So this lecture is a continuation of uh, what we already uh, learned uh, previously. We already learned what kind of behavior, characteristics, traits, features that need to be uh, found in a good entrepreneur. Also looked into definition of entrepreneurship, technopreneurship, intrapreneurship, all that we have covered. Now, assuming that you have already the intention to embark on being an entrepreneur, so let's look into this topic of uh, business entities and also the rules and support that need to be uh, looked into or what is available in Malaysia altogether uh, relevant for such an endeavor. Uh, also need to understand that this uh, uh, rules, uh, law, uh, support uh, are dynamic. They will change over time. Here is the learning outcome. I think it's quite uh, straightforward. Uh, I have a lot of uh, slides to actually cover for this lecture, so I'm going to go a bit faster than usual. Right. Uh, first, we look at the type of business that you would like to actually register. Okay. Uh, you need to know that uh, every uh, company need to be registered or not. It will be, uh, you know, like a black uh, market uh, company. Uh, uh, unregistered company is considered illegal and therefore it is likely for uh, a breach of uh, any uh, law and therefore you are liable for uh, penalty if you are caught uh, running a company that is not registered and uh, in terms of uh, uh, where which company that you want to choose uh, there are many uh, this is not only found uh, in the types to be present in malaysia but actually uh, all uh, over uh, these are the types of company that is uh, around and in fact there are more than this that is uh, been uh, selected here to give you an idea on which company to choose upon uh, in terms of uh, what uh, popular uh, uh, i would uh, say three types it could be sole proprietorship proprietorship uh, partnership okay uh, sole proprietorship I rather call it enterprise company because it's the smallest uh, company that is uh, uh, considered to be registered and also the most popular one when you just starting a company then you have also partnership and these two comes under the act of 1956 so if malaysia is uh, uh, got the independence in 1957 looks like before the independence itself this act has come about because uh, business has been uh, uh, going on uh, then and over time more and more act have uh, come about okay, to control the uh, sporadic uh, increase in uh, types of business that is uh, found in Malaysia and then uh, in the then came the company act of 1965 that actually controls or governs uh, the private limited company or Sendirian Berhad company, also popular choice. Uh, and then also you have other companies like uh, limited company, the Berhad company, where uh, sh uh, shares are actually uh, given in the Bursa Saham of Malaysia. Uh, so it is uh, open for uh, people to buy the share. Okay, But Sendirian Berhad uh, not been uh, listed in the stock market. Uh, unlike a uh, public limited company. Okay. Uh, uh, looks like in 2012, another act came about and to control this uh, limited liability or partnership uh, came about. Okay. Uh, there have been amendments to the act. Amendments means later, instead of uh, uh, dissolving the act, say act of 1956, uh, rather they you know look into addition to the act uh, changes modification uh, to improve on the act and therefore amendment have uh, come about in 1978 for the business uh, registration act so uh, here you can see the three that is most common uh, one uh, in terms of business registration 
uh, for small medium enterprise okay uh, you have to firstly uh, understand the importance of small medium enterprise in this country that they are the one uh, the great winners uh, in terms of business and they employ the most number of uh, employees or staff or workers in malaysia so uh, smes are very important and therefore uh, these three choices uh, uh, quite common uh, and popular to be uh, registered in the uh, SSM uh, uh, when it comes to registration of companies. So they are sole proprietorship uh, or enterprise, as I said, also known as a $50 company because uh, it takes around 50 ringgit plus to actually register. So now I think a bit more. Then you have partnership. Uh, this one uh, more likely uh, made uh, or registered because of partnership, say, uh, for barbers uh, or uh, doctors, panel of doctors or lawyers uh, uh, coming together, auditors coming together, become partners. Okay? And then private limited company, the uh, Sindrian Berhad company, also known as a 50,000 uh, ringgit company because it takes that uh, that around that sum maybe now increase to actually register the Sindirian Berhad uh, company itself. So these are the three popular ones. So let's look in detail about uh, each one of those three, uh, beginning with sole proprietorship uh, or the enterprise company. So uh, it is governed by the Act of 1956. Uh, amendment has been done on 1978, probably uh, more content to the uh, Act itself to govern this uh, sole proprietorship companies. And uh, it is ownership, uh, one person alone is sufficient. And I personally have uh, one company registered under sole proprietorship when I had to uh, come up with the product because uh, as per requirement for uh, Ministry of Science, uh, uh, sorry, Ministry of Health registration of the product, uh, they require, you know, the Ministry of Health got under them another unit called uh, N NPRA or National Pharmaceutical, Pharmaceutical Regulatory uh, Agency, NPRA. So uh, within the product registration, they say I must open a company. So therefore I have no choice to open a company. There I open the sole property ship company and the company's name is Industrial Biotech Enterprise. And I think around uh, 50 ringgit, uh, slightly more than 50 ringgit to register and then every year I think uh, to renew have to pay around 60, 65 ringgit uh, to keep that uh, company going. Okay. So uh, uh, liability wise, uh, it is not separate legal entity so you are bound for uh, anybody taking a case on you or also the government if I uh, you know have any wrongdoing the government can take uh, criminal action on me so a bit uh, a bit scary to own this company because uh, the liability is quite a lot on the owner uh, okay it's not a separate separated uh, from the uh, company and the owner Okay, uh, so likely for bankruptcy, uh, not to the company uh, itself, but rather to the owner. Okay? And uh, usually the capital is small, uh, very even, uh, you know, 50 ringgit is enough to start the company. Okay? And uh, everything is simple and everything need to be done by the owner itself. Uh, because since starting the company from a small scale, there is not much uh, funding to actually hire a lot of people. Eh? And usually uh, when you go to the uh, uh, SSM uh, to register the company, they will ask for a company name. Actually, they will ask for three names, uh, suggestion, because uh, they will check the database when the, whether it overlaps with uh, existing names and then uh, provide you with the uh, option. Uh, so. Um, some people just take the enterprise company and say uh, Mutu Sundry Enterprise, <laughs> just use their name only. So very simple.
So here uh, been put the uh, advantages and disadvantages of uh, owning a company of uh, enterprise. Uh, looks like it could be, uh, you know, uh, let's look at the uh, advantages first. It's easy to manage uh, because everything is uh, done by uh, you. Uh, so, uh, no need to uh, ask the shareholders or no need to ask a few partners before actually coming to decision. So, that's the meaning of easy to manage as the one owner decides everything. Uh, owner enjoys a certain degree of flexibility. Same goes in any decision about uh, where to have the office, um, what kind of business venture to start up, all can be just decided by one single uh, person. Uh, also easy to form and dissolve. So uh, that I like because uh, when it's about time no longer needed, no need to have so much of formalities. It's just go and uh, go to the SSM and or even I heard uh, through online can dissolve it. Okay, and uh, all profit go to the owner, so that's also uh, good. So whatever earning, no need to look into partners, no need to look into shares. All uh, goes to the owner. So very hardworking, you get most money uh, out of it. Uh, the income tax is actually done when you do the personal income tax so you just click another button there is uh, while you're doing uh, you are doing every year your income tax just say uh, there's also business and then uh, when you click it more uh, windows will open to put in uh, whatever requested okay um, uh, less subjected to government rules and regulations so financial statement to the inland revenue does not require validation so no need to hire any external auditor you yourself can do all the auditing uh, keeping all the receipt uh, doing basic accounting established okay? disadvantages a uh, limited source of capital so uh, yeah uh, sometimes very difficult because you are the only owner you have to fork out all the money of your own savings or you know go in uh, take a loan from family members if it's a partnership i'm sure it's a bigger contribution but this is not a partnership so a bit uh, limited there uh, and this unlimited liability is quite scary uh, you fail scared uh, you know uh, uh, supplier will come after you uh, you have uh, to bear that your personal wealth also could be targeted after a court case or you know government uh, looking at uh, the company okay? uh, so there are many uh, disadvantages uh, or go through it i think it's uh, straightforward in terms of uh, uh, explanation just read it you'll understand okay so let's move to the uh, next uh, business or slide so here you have partnership type of business to actually register so you can also consider to be partners uh, you have a uh, number of you could be engineers uh, uh, graduate as engineers could you know put your heads together to become partners so it'll be an engineering company that uh, people can come and get a uh, service in the oil and gas for instance okay so set up company like that uh, it is governed by also act has uh, seen the same act as that of uh, sole proprietorship uh, it can be two to twenty percent uh, so uh, quite a big number if required and uh, types of business include uh, legal firm you know uh, uh, lawyers uh, coming together uh, architects uh, accounts uh, accountants uh, you know like price waterhouse uh, they come together as accountants and then uh, uh, when a company require accounting they just uh, uh, they are external accountants uh, go to the company sit there for a few days even weeks to just do the accounting and then uh, liability, not a separate legal entity, just like the sole proprietorship. So be careful if you don't have a prior agreement, then you will have end up with a loss uh, if uh, no prior agreement with all the partners. Uh, partners carry out the business, share the capital, profit and losses, but uh, with a prior agreement on the uh, you know capital, profit and uh, losses you will know who contribute more will get more profit uh, like that 
okay so here uh, been uh, uh, put all the points uh, of advantages and disadvantages i'm not going to go through each one that will take a lot of time so uh, here's the partnership wise uh, looks like it's easy to set up uh, with few formalities so that's good uh, you want to uh, register as soon as possible and start your business and uh, uh, easier to secure financial assistance because uh, banks will trust more with uh, partnership rather than sole proprietorship okay? and uh, other things uh, like uh, the responsibility divided equally among partners yeah uh, if uh, uh, everybody you know having one head one brain uh, to contribute like sole proprietorship now you have 20 heads coming together definitely it'll be helpful but ensure that all the 20 heads uh, speak the same common uh, unified uh, language if anybody not in agreement then uh, longer time required for the decision and that's also part of the disadvantages okay uh, disadvantage wise uh, unlimited liabilities may involve personal assets or a bit scary you go and join as partner suddenly there is a court case and then uh, you will see your personal wealth also affected even though you, you were a silent partner at the time you joined this uh, company okay so uh, that's why they say uh, you know ensure that you have this uh, agreement uh, uh, that agreement will state that you are a silent partner or active member therefore you are not liable in court uh, so much uh, compared to the active man member itself Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, type of company. Uh, yeah, uh, before we move to the next type of company, which is Sindirian Brad, just a bit more on the partnership agreement, where uh, if partnership agreement, if there is no prior agreement, uh, they call it this uh, uh, contract or partnership agreement, then everything is considered equal, uh, profit, uh, losses, uh, running of the uh, company everything to be equal but if you have this partnership agreement i think you are much uh, safer uh, so uh, let's see the next slide about if you don't have that partnership agreement here given the content of the partnership agreement obviously you need to take a lawyer to make all this agreement uh, they will know uh, or have templates on how to make the agreement as uh, uh, you know supportive as possible to each members. Okay? Um, not going to go in detail, but it's uh, highlighted there what is important. So it appears uh, if you don't have a partnership agreement and that's the problem. And uh, compared to the Act of 1956, this Act of 1961. Uh, sort of like uh, makes it equal in terms of uh, the losses, the profit. Uh, you can see profit or losses are shared equally if you don't have a partnership agreement. So uh, suggested that uh, a, a agreement is actually put forward. Uh, therefore, you don't regret if uh, you know later part with your members, uh, partners, uh, if you don't have an agreement. This is a continuation of the content of the uh, Act 1961, the sections, uh, the relevant sections on uh, what happens if there is no prior agreement between the members of the partnership. So you can read to understand uh, much detail uh, at your own time. So the uh, last of the three popular types of uh, types of companies is the private limited company. And this is uh, also known as Sindirian Brahat because the name must carry the Sindirian Brahat. Okay. And uh, it is also uh, informally or unofficially known as the 50,000 uh, ringgit company because uh, uh, I'm not sure how it came about. Probably they say you must put 50,000 in the current account. Uh, so that's why I think you can take out the money after that, but must have 50,000 ringgit. Uh, you know, start this company up. Okay? So uh, uh, it needs at least two members. Uh, so then uh, 
what's good about it is the legal entity is separate that means uh, you are liable for being sued but to the company uh, and also if ever you need to pay is up to how much of equity that you have invested uh, rather than uh, say you are suable up to say 100,000 uh, for the shares that you invested but your wealth is uh, 1 million dollars uh, they cannot touch that uh, you know uh, more than 100,000 to get everything uh, all your wealth because of the suing uh, doesn't matter government or civil case so it's kind of like safer a bit uh, but the on the other side there are many procedures involved in this company i think that is why uh, people who are starting a new company rather go for sole proprietorship or partnership uh, compared to this so uh, as i said uh, you face legal action not on your name or not on the member's name but rather on the uh, company uh, name itself so that's a bit better okay? and uh, lifespan is not only up to the death of the or uh, resignation of the member uh, like sole proprietorship is up to the uh, time of uh, death and also if uh, the person leaves that company that's it sole proprietorship is gone you cannot transfer to another person that uh, company but for this uh, it's possible uh, not dependent on the death or resignation of its members it can carry on the Sindirian Berhad company uh, after these incidences so given here uh, more on the terms and conditions of uh, this uh, Sindirian Berhad company as you can see at the bottom a uh, company must use that Sindirian Berhad uh, like you know Jaya Sindirian Berhad <laughs> like that must have it uh, uh, so it's a requirement for uh, SSM uh, and then the uh, number of uh, members uh, cannot exceed 50 uh, another thing is uh, uh, there is it's not listed in the stock market but there are shareholders uh, these are not like thousands of shareholders or unknown people uh, like you know in Bursa Saham you can just buy the stock of a company but here are more of known people and then uh, they will uh, they cannot run the company if they uh, you know invest they will have shares huh? uh, but uh, they have a board of directors and then probably under the board of directors they have a chief executive officer and then followed by you know managers and so so um, it's uh, still have uh, shareholders but the shareholders do not go through the uh, Bursa Saham or stock uh, market so you cannot list it to the public uh, that's what I meant about Sindirian Berhad company more on the requirements you know when you want to register the company these are all the requirements for the Sindirian Berhad company looks like a, a, a lot more requirements uh, compared to the enterprise company that I have uh, registered uh, much easier to do I just walked into a UTC of uh, Kuantan and then took me like an hour plus done already uh, uh, having the counter session and later you will have an assignment uh, that you will not no need for you to go physically to the counter uh, all can be supposedly to be done uh, by using uh, you know uh, their website or some other mirroring websites so please look into that but if you have opportunity to go physically do go physically and do it, it doesn't take that long okay and also convenient uh, coming back to the private limited company, uh, it needs a memorandum of association. So there is a template. Uh, you have to uh, customize the template if required. You have article of association. Uh, all this can be done by the uh, you know the uh, company secretary. Looks like company secretary also uh, a must. And the company secretary could be uh, internal, that means you hire monthly uh, pay salary or could be also external. Uh, there are a lot of chartered 
secretaries, uh, companies that uh, give rights for you to uh, secretary by hire. So then they will do all this either for this purpose alone or continuation uh, when required for a secretary. So you see many things there. So it's not that uh, easy compared to sole proprietorship or partnership. And um, there's also this authorized capital, uh, modal dibenarkan and also paid up capital. To explain about it, uh, say 1 million is the uh, modal dibenarkan that they are looking into for the whole investment for that project or that company. Okay? But uh, so far only paid uh, 250,000 uh, for that period of time. So that's called paid up capital. I hope uh, that uh, makes you understand about the meaning of modal dibenarkan and modal berbaya. All right, uh, here also uh, shown the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so it looks like uh, every types of company have uh, advantage and disadvantages. Um, obviously, uh, one of the disadvantages is uh, cost of setting up is quite high. Uh, and also quite a uh, lot of uh, steps, uh, rules and regulation need to fulfill. And uh, then the tax part is also a disadvantage because you need to have a separate uh, uh, corporate tax to pay rather than put it in your personal uh, uh, LHDN account. Uh, but on the good side is uh, you are not liable to be sued uh, for your own personal wealth, uh, you have millions in the bank. Uh, if uh, there is a loss by the company, up to one million, uh, you don't have to end up, uh, you know, sued for all your wealth uh, for the loss of the company in running of the company. So, uh, pros and cons. Uh, but uh, you, when you do want to open a company, so now you have three choices. Uh, make sure you know which is the correct one. There are people to advise you on which is the company to choose. Uh, so in this uh, slide, all the types of companies, uh, not only the three, are all also been put and uh, differentiated between the registration at ROB, ROC. Looks like there are a few uh, uh, departments or uh, places to actually register uh, that is separating from one to the other. For instance, uh, sole proprietorship and partnership is under the ROB while uh, the Sindirian Berhad turns out to be in the ROC of the government body in charge of uh, registration. And uh, here also uh, been shown the public limited company Berhad uh, there are other companies as well, corporate uh, and also uh, some uh, non-profit companies, uh, corporate corporation uh, that is uh, involved in non-profit uh, 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 rather than social service welfare. Okay? There are many companies. Then also want to bring your attention to the limited liability partnership, which is considered to be uh, in between of partnership and the uh, Sindirian Berhad. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the regulations on it is in between these two. Uh, that's all I know about the uh, uh, limited liability partnership. Given in this slide is the uh, uh, how to register the companies, either sole proprietorship or partnership or private limited company. Only looks like the private limited company, the Sindiran Berhad, has more uh, uh, procedures, uh, more requirements compared to sole proprietorship or partnership. Uh, you can uh, click on those links there to actually find out more on how to register. Anyway, you are given uh, five percent, um, uh, what you call uh, assignment uh, for this and therefore you will uh, know the practicality of registration of sole proprietorship or even partnership. Right, uh, now we move to another uh, direction of this uh, lecture itself. In, uh, say you are now having money uh, and then you want to get into business. Uh, which business do you want to obtain? Is it starting from scratch, everything from zero? Or why not buy already an existing business, which is uh, 
already been built up, already uh, commissioned, already uh, selling uh, whatever product or service. So you just take over. Uh, when it comes to takeover, you can also look into taking over family business uh, succession. Either you are succeeding, say your father or grandfather, uh, you are the successor, <laughs> or uh, you want to take over uh, existing family business, you want to buy it over. Uh, so also can look into that. And then there's this franchise. Uh, franchise is a uh, quite uh, interesting uh, because uh, less. Uh, uh, effort need to put in but a bit more expensive so if you ask me uh, franchises could be a bit more expensive to acquire compared to others but others also can be already uh, big uh, very big business huh? so if you want to buy over it could be also expensive so let's look at each one of those uh, types of uh, uh, buy over or start up or take over okay uh, starting with the uh, from the scratch scratch means you do everything uh, from a to z uh, until the level of uh, selling making profit and sustaining okay so looks like uh, it is the most popular method in terms of uh, startup for entrepreneurs and uh, you need to ensure a lot of decisions to be done by you because normally you'll be a single person owner. So uh, no, need to look into the form of business huh? uh, that you I can think of is either uh, manufacturing of product or service. Huh? This which one you want to do also need to consider before actually registration of the company. And then uh, the business name itself also comes from you, everything from you, because uh, this is from scratch. Okay? Uh, if you need to, uh, you know, uh, have the trade name to be registered if in the patent office, also everything, uh, uh, everything, even the location, uh, the funding, are you coughing up the money yourself or are you borrowing uh, from bank, credit company, uh, where all need to be. So there's a lot of uh, hard work involved and a lot of uncertainties. So you need to also find ways to get information. So the information are all there. And even the government agency to help you out if you go and seek, seek uh, at them for information. So uh, given here advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so uh, since you are starting from scratch, it could be a single owner. You can make all the decision. If you are really good at planning, uh, you can have a very nice name for it, very good location for it, strategic location. All can be done compared to you buy over another business. So that's the advantage. The disadvantages concern uh, uh, this possible also that you know uh, banks don't give you loan uh, because it's just, uh, all from scratch. They don't believe in your story, uh, and then uh, require more time to start up because everything is done by scratch. Uh, don't uh, registration might take a long time. Everything could take a long time to get approval, and then. Uh, not able to accurately estimate sales cost and profit uh, you are heading everything like a, a blind bet you know uh, even a blind bet can reach the destination better than you uh, so you don't even know whether the product that you have uh, uh, done uh, it has ability to bring profit uh, because never uh, enchanted territory never been in that uh, level of from production to sales and then getting profit and can the uh, come the person that you sell to customer come back again is there going to be return customer so many things are uncertain the uncertainty could also create anxiety to uh, anyone who's starting from uh, scratch and this is about takeover already existing business Okay, uh, but again, uh, well, it's good because uh, everything is already done for uh, done for you. 
you just see uh, maybe in the uh, before you buy the company you see everything is beautiful everything is in place uh, but only need to be cautious why are they selling if they are the one be, uh, offering it in the market okay uh, you can easily go to muda.my then you uh, you know look into uh, sales of businesses existing business you will see many uh, businesses being sold there okay uh, you you look at uh, businesses such as laundry mart uh, uh, supermarket mini market uh, what else uh, car wash uh, you can actually contact the uh, person who put the advertisement and then start negotiating whether you can buy the business but careful if they are the one advertised there must be a reason why they are selling okay uh, if you are the one uh, interested in a, say a car wash business which is thriving uh, doing very well then uh, obviously uh, not a problem uh, because uh, that company or is doing well but if it's advertised like in muda.my maybe that's why they're selling it because got problem some pro hidden problem that you don't know so you need to investigate okay uh, and then you have an issue where you are trying to buy a company uh, that is already doing well uh, when you approach the uh, the owner they don't want to sell <laughs> and also if they want to sell they put a very high price so normally buying an existing business may be more costly than starting from uh, scratch so here given all the advantages and disadvantages of uh, buying an existing business i think in the previous slide I already spoken to you about the advantage and uh, disadvantages uh, not knowing is uh, i think is the disadvantages so you need to uh, investigate thoroughly before you invest in such a, a venture okay uh, also have uh, issues where the uh, uh, staff you know workers there may be very loyal to the earlier uh, you know owner uh, that also may not be sitting very well with you okay and also uh, the suppliers concern uh, they've been uh, say providing the uh, car shampoo uh, for the car wash and that supplier you know like the previous owner rather than you also can have conflict but it could be also advantageous because you, know, you already have all the supplier in place because of the previous uh, owner uh, got everything done okay so uh, i think it's quite straightforward uh, please uh, read and understand these advantages and disadvantages of uh, buying an existing uh, business so next we look at the family business succession uh, here family business succession does not uh, uh, could be two ways uh, one that you have uh, money then you want to take over say a restaurant which is doing well in the uh, Klang Valley uh, so there that uh, business restaurant has been there for generations uh, so you just want to take over or it could be also that it's your own family business uh, say there are, that restaurant is you know brought down from your grandfather to your father now you after graduating will take over that uh, business so it will be also highlighted to be either one of these okay so uh, it is uh, started up by some family members okay uh, and then here given four levels of family business but in my opinion uh, level one level two level three can be say the founder uh, because uh, to establish the business up to maturity uh, from the start of the business to the growth and development up to maturity usually it will be the founder uh, doing all this then it's already established uh, comes to the uh, you know takeover transition period and that will be either uh, second generation or third generation uh, so grandfather put a lot of effort to establish the business 
from inception, growth, development, up to maturity, sustain, then comes your turn to take over. <laughs> That's what it means up to level four. Here, given all the challenges of actually running a family business, uh, either the business is already uh, mature and running, or you know, after come you your turn to take over at level four, or you know, uh, you want to buy over this family business. Okay, let's uh, look at some. Uh, you can see we start from the bottom. The rivalry, because it's a family business, it could be that you know your cousin, your uh, you know your father could be, your mother could be in that business. So, uh, you know, or your brother can be, or sister can be in the business as well. So rivalry is definitely in there and rivalry can make a, a huge impact uh, about the takeover of the business itself and decision making. Yeah? So that is, And then emotion as well. Uh, sometimes uh, in the board meeting uh, cannot make a decision because uh, fighting, infighting among <laughs> among the family members, and then uh, you also have uh, sometimes money taken out uh, without even uh, putting in uh, black and white in the accounting because uh, this is my family business. I just take the money from the cash reg uh, register and use it for my own purpose, like that kind of mentality. Okay, so all uh, uh, there is an issue in terms of uh, challenges. But it's not uh, mm. totally uh, wasteful, uh, uh, cannot be overcome. So carry on from the uh, last uh, slide just now. Uh, the challenges can be, say, disadvantages as well. Okay, uh, Like nepotism, huh? like, you know, suddenly comes to your auntie and say, I put my son uh, to be the CEO because the CEO died already. So put lah. Huh? But he or she don't have any experience. In fact, very bad. <laughs> so uh, without merit, without qualification, just put the uh, person and therefore could end up with bad decision and the company go at loss because uh, not very good in managing that person who is not qualified, not skillful. Okay? And then uh, uh, the good part of it is, uh, you know, uh, you have certain uh, commitment more then, you know, since you are having managers, which are family members, CEO is a family member, they are all committed. They know whatever effort they put is for their family business and therefore they will work harder than the usual nine to five, uh, you know, employer, uh, employee or worker. Uh, the nine to five employee may not think that way they will say we put so much effort still only get the same salary so they are not very committed so that's the advantage of family business uh, and also can go on if uh, at a time period of loss uh, you know not doing very well like now covid uh, the family members say no need to pay salary for one year also never mind Okay, uh, that only comes in the family business, but not in the business, uh, you know, of uh, uh, being salaried uh, to do the job, like an employee, a worker, uh, like that. So, good thing about family business is the commitment, the pride that is found in the family working there. Uh, they will do uh, more than the usual to ensure the company uh, does well. Uh, next, we look at a company which is already uh, very established in terms of what to be done in uh, procedure-wise, steps-wise until uh, get the sales. Uh, even the company itself or the uh, establishment itself, how to have uh, the uh, renovation, uh, how it looks like, uh, say like, you know, fast food joint. Uh, how it needs to be established, uh, the seating area, the counter, the menu, everything is established and that is a franchise. Okay? Uh, so you have to uh, capture the contract and then the contract will state everything. You sign the contract 
pay a certain amount of money for the contract. Firstly, the franchiser, the person who gives you the franchise, uh, need to be happy to appoint you. Uh, so some some uh, franchise uh, companies a bit difficult to get, such as you know for Petronas, you, know, you want to put a, a petrol uh, uh, shop, a petrol uh, petrol uh, shop uh, anywhere. You need to convince Petronas to give you the uh, franchise. It's not going to be easy. But once you get, you have to give a deposit uh, uh, or money, like you know five hundred thousand ringgit, to say you already captured the contract. After that, everything will be taught to you, easy. So that's nice about franchise. Uh, so here shown uh, once you acquire the franchise, what are the kind of uh, payment need to be done? Looks like there is a franchise fee or one-off payment. Like just now I said, uh, 500,000 ringgit for the Petrona station, for instance, example. Okay, And then after that, also got royalty. After you have sales per month, how much from the uh, percentage is taken uh, for Petronas and then uh, percentage for you, okay, monthly or yearly. And then uh, also looks like a franchiser, you don't need to do the uh, advertisement or promotion effort because it's all bundled together, uh, say done by Petronas or McDonald's or KFC, they will advertise as KFC or McDonald's. They don't advertise like, you know, Jaya's KFC, uh, Achong's KFC, okay? So, franchiser has nothing to do with the advertisement. So, they also need to pay because uh, lump sum done by the franchiser. So, uh, here given the uh, more on the franchise, uh, so look like you can get the sales right once you get the contract done, everything bundled together, trademark, trade name, the product itself, all the products. Okay. Examples of uh, uh, franchise uh, includes automotive, you know, like uh, dealers for Volkswagen, uh, Proton, uh Perodua, like that you know petrol kiosks or so, petronas bhp all that uh, service station uh fast food uh, mcdonald kfc okay so uh once you get it uh once you get the contract you win the contract it will be complete setup so much easier uh, everything you can see the layout also given what is the color scheme, the ambience of the setting inside the uh, petrol station, everything is standardized. So in terms of the advantages and disadvantages, uh, we uh, bundle it in this slide to be advantages for the franchisee as well as the franchiser. Then the next slide is uh, the disadvantages to the franchisee and also to the franchiser. Uh, quite a lot here, I'm not going to go in detail, but uh, one carry, uh, one thing to carry uh, to with you is uh, advantage is uh, lesser burden uh, for both franchisee and also franchiser because they share the total burden. Huh? Uh, the franchisee look at only uh, serving the customer. Uh, and then all the things are already been set by the franchiser, already standardized, uh, menu-wise, how to charge the customer, everything. Okay, so less burden there for the franchisee. <clears throat> then the advantage for the franchiser is no need to deal with the customer because uh, let the franchisee deal with it. I only look into making the quality of the product is uh, to be same uh, every batch and then pass it to the franchisee to sell like that okay so less burden because the burden is shared so more time can be taken by the franchiser to do r d develop new product to be included in the menu that's what mcdonald does right they have uh, often uh, every month new uh, burgers for instance when it comes to disadvantages, I think uh, one that uh, stand out is uh, on the franchisee part is, uh, you know, everything is uh, done by the franchiser. So uh, you cannot add 
uh, new menu, you cannot change the seating arrangement, you cannot change the design of your uh, restaurant, for instance, because uh, must uh, agree with the contract of the franchisor. While in terms of the franchisor, the disadvantage is actually if uh, they wrongly choose the franchisee, uh, uh, a person who cannot accept uh, to go with standardized procedures, then a lot of uh, uh, fighting can take place. Uh, so that's another issue with the franchisor. Uh, there are others, please go through it. Uh, it's quite straightforward. Uh, this this lecture seems to be a lot of uh, slides uh, we already done with uh, so far in terms of what business need to be looked into to register and then just now we looked into uh, if you want to take over or start from scratch um, and then franchise uh, so uh, how to look into the advantages and disadvantages uh, challenges uh, in that uh, aspect Next, we're going to look into the rules and law uh, of uh, starting the business um, or rather already been existing and you must follow. Okay, doesn't matter, doesn't matter whether it's a very small company or a big manufacturing uh, plant, what needs to be there uh, in order uh, not to be penalized by the government body or even the state uh, where your company is located. We'll also later see uh, supports that is uh, available uh, either at state level or at federal level and also all the uh, amenities, uh, the available uh, uh, amenities uh, like uh, transportation, uh, what is available in the country, even telecommunication, even up to the basic utilities like water and electricity, that is present in Malaysia. Now, uh, that's what we're going to look into after this. So, this is the uh, content that we're going to look into under the business rule and law. Uh, briefly, we're going to look into approval and license. Uh, what are the license in uh, business setup or, you know, to run a business, okay? And then uh, infrastructure, uh, law and regulation in setting up business uh, premise, you know, the, the uh, physical sense of the uh, building itself, okay? And then uh, about your staff uh, or the workers, employment policies and legislation, uh, pertaining to employment rule and regulation. So uh, once you start a company, uh, must look into whether you are under the jurisdiction of uh, excise license or sales tax license. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I am not very familiar with uh, this excise license and uh, sales tax license. But uh, based on my reading, uh, this is what I can understand. The excise license is, uh, uh, you know, based on tax on every single product that you sell. While sales tax is more like bundled together for, uh, say, a period of one month, what has been sold. Uh, and then excise license is more for excise tax is for uh, certain products. This could be uh, liquor, uh, cigarette, uh, or petrol. Uh, so very uh, grouped in this uh, listing, very special listing. Uh, items which are in this kind of line, like you know, liquor, cigarettes. Okay, and then for every other product, I assume sales tax is uh, accountable. So you need to register. Then you have to pay the tax. Okay. either per product sold or for bundled up as per period of time. There are usually many approval or license to be uh, obtained. Uh, so in this case, uh, there is manufacturing license. You know, if your company is into manufacturing, uh, your production line there, so you have to have this uh, uh, register to MIDA, uh, Malaysian Industrial Development Authority, MIDA, uh, you have to obtain the license. 
Okay. Uh, if it's a manufacturing activity and uh, they stated there the the shareholders uh, fund does not uh, uh, if it's more than uh, 2.5 million okay and also above uh, or engaging 75 uh, full-time staffs okay sometimes the company is very smart uh, they already have say 76 uh, full-time uh, employees and they don't want to uh, fulfill into this license they just go and put, put the some of the stuff as temporary or part-time uh, employees and therefore no need to get this license even though they are manufacturing okay so uh, it's all up to how you play the game but make sure it's legal because if it's illegal then you have a problem okay and then there's also no object objection letter uh, that you need to get from the state government you know we have many states in malaysia so if you want to start the company in a location of uh, say in pahang it will be a different uh, uh, way of handling with the state government or if you want to do it with in penang state or in slango state will be different so you have to apply uh, for this state government to uh, have no objection for you to start the business in their state so looks like here also approval of planning that means if you thinking of a manufacturing plan say in uh, two or five years from now uh, you also need to you know uh, request for approval from the uh, relevant uh, state itself uh, or in the city center Okay, like uh, must apply to Kuantan City Council. Whether you can develop a manufacturing plant in in the Kuantan City itself. Okay, so it looks like that. So you have to fulfill. I guess uh, when you start anything such as uh, at that scale, you would also have enough resources to uh, get experienced people uh, to help you. Uh, to understand in all these uh, licenses and approvals so you don't have to be alone in trying to figure it out uh, what i meant is there will be some advisors consultants to help you out okay uh, also uh, approval for building plan so when you already have the plan done also need to have it to be approved uh, in terms of the street drainage uh, you know everything need approval so it might be delayed not so you must take into account the delay in approval as well in your timeline uh, in your uh, planning uh, uh, if you say uh, going to be done in two years in construction everything uh, start business but don't forget that all this approval will be delayed by the council so may put it as three years taking into account all this delay of uh, time needed for approval then when finally the infrastructure say you build the factory already you need to make sure that the certificate of fitness is uh, uh, approved by the uh, local uh, uh, council there okay uh, certificate of fitness is very important uh, you know uh, i found out that also when i buy a house you need the certificate of fitness then only you can move in into the house without the certificate of fitness you cannot get into the house and stay uh, because it may not be safe so some authority need to check everything then they say this uh, building has been built in accordance to minimum uh, safety requirements then only you get the certificate then you can move in same thing with the uh, manufacturing plan and also uh, approval for business related license uh, it looks like if you want to have the factory uh, with a canteen you must follow the canteen uh, regulation you know what food to sell uh, how hygiene uh, the food need to be so all that need to be also followed uh, according to the requirements more on approvals uh, 
like even the environmental uh, issue need to be looked into by uh, people uh, that want to start up a manufacturing plant uh, don't know which scale it is a very big manufacturing plant or even a shop lot also need to see that what you once the product is done the uh, emission uh, either in the form of uh, vapor smoke or you know uh, waste uh, which could be toxic need to be uh, uh, converted to something safe then only released to the environment or not you are in violation and therefore you could be penalized okay same goes with the safety and health there is a dosh uh, looks like there, there is an act uh, if you have a machinery equipment in your manufacturing plant it has to be certified first and registered then only can uh, go forward All right uh, next we look into when you hire people uh, the employees what are the requirements need to be fulfilled at the government level uh, the uh, minimum uh, requirements to be fulfilled so you have here employment employment act 1955 so you need to if uh, they say here if the salary is uh, do not exceed uh, 1500 and uh, therefore it's under the these uh, requirements to be fulfilled okay so if you have many of the staff uh, uh, laborers under your company or manufacturing production plant and they are not exceeding the salary of 1500 the minimum wage uh, therefore you have to ensure you follow the guideline put by this act in terms of the working hours uh, maybe eight hours you are required to only employ them beyond eight hours must look into overtime you cannot say must work 10 hours no overtime so all these are given in this act it's not that uh, uh, a person uh, having higher salary beyond 1500 is uh, not cared upon by the act uh, simply because uh, a person who have higher salary would also be uh, can afford uh, and also uh, educated enough to sue the uh, boss if they are not taking care of their welfare uh, working welfare okay so you can they can hire they will know wrong and right and have the money to actually take action but uh, those who are laborers uh, having salary of 1500 and below uh, normally need uh, some uh, care by outside party that's why this act came about uh, quite popularly known as uh, epf huh? so you know you heard about it epf maybe by your parents or you yourself already uh, done uh, some jobs as sales assistant then you got the epf though sometimes you get disappointed because you are told 1500 salary per month and then when finally the month ends it's not 1500 because have to give this epf uh, contribution which is for your future when you retire uh, supposedly no need to save uh, every month for your you know they call it hurry to a old age huh? but uh, with the government coming up with this policy act therefore the uh, you need to contribute the uh, 11 uh, percent while uh, the the uh, employer need to give uh, 12 percent so uh, 23 percent by employer and employee uh, must be given okay uh, so that's uh, epf contribution also need to be put into the financial management of a particular company okay. uh, if you work in the private sector i was uh, some uh, i think i was working more than five to uh, eight years in the private sector before i joined the government okay uh, in the government now i don't have any epf because i have opted for uh, pension okay but uh, when you work in the private uh, uh, company you have also epf and also soxo 
Soxo is like an insurance while you are in the working hours. Uh, if anything to happen, uh, so can compensate uh, for the loss, uh, uh, even up to the loss of life. Okay, so 2.5% uh, of basic uh, employment uh, salary will be deducted as a premium for that purpose. Okay, uh, so this looks like uh, for wages not exceeding 2,000 a month. But I believe even uh, above 2000 or so, it, it depends on the company. Uh, so the company needs to also have an accounts uh, uh, clerk or accounts department to look into all this contribution on a monthly basis for their uh, employees. So other than the financial, uh, you know, uh, contributions, uh, like SOXO so EPF also need to look into the safety aspects of your employees or workers and therefore uh, safety in the uh, uh, in the uh, manufacturing plant or the company also will be considered under the occupational safety and health. Okay? There are you know machines which uh, can emit a high decibel uh, sound uh, noise. And if uh, a long hours of exposure to the high levels of uh, decibels, they call it decibels, without the proper uh, uh, you know, the PPE, protective, uh, uh, protective gears, uh, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, that uh, person could end up uh, being deaf over years in exposure. So you must uh, give all these PPEs uh, and also check the decibel levels in order to make sure it's in accordance to the uh, act like, you know, um, Factory and Machinery Act of 1967. There are many things, uh, but, you know, you have uh, people to help you. Right. Next section is about business support on uh, or the facilities that is available in this uh, uh, country, Malaysia, to encourage business itself. Okay? Uh, but I'm going to go fast because I uh, already spent a lot of time already. So, uh, and this, by right, you can uh, get the support by going to respective places or someone who is working with you, an experienced person, can give you the information. So, our country is a developing country and uh, I think reaching developed nation, de developed country. So, we are not like third world country, uh, not having all the infrastructure for business. And this all uh, part of the uh, amenities, uh, incentive given to encourage uh, business. And this uh, slide is about infrastructure. So you have a certain land within this country being gazetted to be uh, for agriculture, uh, for industrial use, uh, it's like industrial estate. Then also for conservation uh, or reserve forests. Okay? So make sure when you want to set up a manufacturing plant, companies, it is uh, put into the right uh, region or area. Uh, gazetted for that purpose because once it's uh, grouped together in that area like industrial estates there are around 200 industrial estates and keep on increasing according to this SEDC uh, okay every state will have it okay so uh, easier to monitor to regulate uh, and also easy for the company also because uh, everything is nearby uh, resources uh, maybe the supplier also nearby uh, and then after the product is ready also can have the dealer nearby uh, so that kind of thing so there's the use of industrial estate so the more the industrial estate in a country the better the the country can grow okay? and then you have this uh, FIZ um, free industrial zone uh, we have the Bayan Lepas free zone okay, in Penang where uh, it's encouraged 
for export purposes uh, with uh, minimal custom interference. Uh, so minimal formalities uh, to help uh, manufacturing and then uh, to uh, export it. Uh, so therefore, uh, buy and lepas is one example. You also have in terms of this world, uh, countries which uh, practices this free industrial uh, zone as the whole country itself, like Hong Kong and Singapore, where uh, trading and production is uh, encouraged with minimal disturbance by the government. There's also this uh, licensed manufacturing warehouses, uh, LMWS. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure exactly what is this, but uh, let me have a go at uh, explaining. Uh, basically, there's also this uh, uh, FIZ, uh, Free Industrial Zone, like just now I said, by Anapas. So to encourage uh, in a new area, uh, gazetted to be industrial area, to encourage the growth of that, looks like uh, can also uh, have companies to go and put warehouses there and then hopefully uh, more uh, companies join and in, uh, have more uh, uh, development in terms of industry in that new area, which uh, previously thought as not uh, encouraging to be uh, for industry. Okay? But to be given the license, need to have 80% of the production uh, meant for export and uh, raw materials or component are mainly imported. Uh, must have that condition fulfilled to get this license. Right, uh, so uh, Malaysia is definitely uh, blessed with uh, many infrastructure and this includes uh, electricity. Okay? We have the Tenaga National, TNB. But for Sabah and Sarawak, the Borneo Island uh, states a bit differ. They will use the Sabah Electricity Board and also Sarawak uh, Supply Corporation. Uh, but still, uh, you know, supply electricity. Okay, uh, maybe the tariff and rate also different. And then water quality is already up to the par of WHO standard, uh, which is not uh, same with many countries. You know, they don't even have a proper uh, hygienic uh, water, uh, ours is good. Um, we also have a low uh, cost uh, or tariff for the water, uh, very low bill. And in terms of telecommunication, uh, phones and all that, uh, internet, we have the uh, telecom to provide good service. If it's not a government uh, service for that, we also have all these uh, other companies like Time, Cellcom, uh, DG to provide uh, these uh, basic necessities. Right. Uh, also, in terms of uh, transportation, uh, we are at uh, minimal uh, good uh, transportation, transportation services uh, in place. We have the port. Uh, I've been to Westport, uh, quite uh, state of the art. Uh, uh, nice to see everything is bustling there with, uh, you know, containers come and go. Okay. And then also have the uh, railway system to be good. And now we're going to have ECRL, hopefully uh, soon to complete and therefore sufficient uh, speed in transporting. Uh, all this is in place already. Yeah, many uh, developed nations will have these IT cities, you know, uh, so same like us, we also have a multimedia super corridor where all the IT companies can come and uh, all the logistic for their uh, needs are already in place, uh, maybe fiber optics and all that uh, ready at uh, better services so they can easily just start the company there. Uh, in an area which is dedicated for IT companies. So we have this also. Here, this slide uh, talks about the financial assistance. Uh, I, in my personal opinion, uh, very difficult also, also to start any company because always uh, worried about uh, where to get the money uh, to start the company and also to uh, 
uh, go for production and then what if happens if there's no sales <laughs> so uh, all this financial assistance is actually uh, given by the government either at federal level or state level so you can tap into all this uh, financial assistance like for myself i have a grant uh, as the type of uh, financial assistant i have this i had this uh, grant uh, known as m thun grant uh, malaysian technology university network uh, grant they call it so i use that to set up the company and also uh, until the development of the product and production of the product itself so you can also have all these uh, assistance so in uh, specific uh, what kind of uh, financial assistance you can see uh, government wise you have the medac uh, ministry of entrepreneur and cooperative development a ministry dedicated for entrepreneurship and then you have uh, you know products or services coming about from science and technology you have the mosti another ministry and also various agencies uh, either in the government or also non government now you you have to bear in mind if you don't qualify for the government assistance you also have uh, uh, banks uh, credit companies to give you loans okay it just differ in terms of the interest and uh, period of payment so here shown uh, all the schemes under medac I'm not going to go in detail uh, simply because i don't know much about each one of them uh, this one is by mosti alone uh, yeah you see uh, all kind of uh, assistance in terms of funding uh, it could be in the form of grants uh, or it could be also in the form of you know 50% you give money and 50% provided by mosti uh, to convert from day one that is called trl technology readiness level uh, trl one up to nine there okay i think when you reach nine it's the the concept is now ready as a product and can then sell so maybe trl one is still in infancy until become product of trl uh, nine uh, this one is about mosti in collaboration with this uh, sandbox uh, but uh, looking at their website that's been given the link uh, i only can gather information that they help in the testing part of it see the uh, you have the product maybe they can test and see uh, the durability and the safety and also uh, efficiency of the product then they can give you certificate for that and this certificate can be useful to gain uh, customer confidence and then of recent you can see that uh, because of the uh, covid uh, pandemic uh, many people need uh, help and mosti has also given an uh, incentive here uh, up to 300000 ringgit of uh, funding where it can help uh, uh, the b40 uh, group who uh, who's been affected to uh, start something of a business more on the uh, funding but uh, honestly i'm not sure entirely on each one of them uh, but it's just to expose to you uh, next time you need access can always go to individual website to understand better uh, i think in malaysian uh, scenario it's better to go personally to get uh, you know one to one uh, interaction rather than go to the website i feel in the website not sufficient enough the information so here you see a government agency that can help you out in terms of funding uh, advice uh, many more uh, on that uh, concept so we are not having a country that has no uh, no assistance given in encouraging sme there is sufficient uh, assistance given in encouraging sme it's just uh, you for you to take the first step this is on training uh, given by the agencies uh, 
uh, a lot here. Uh, so either you or your employees can also benefit from these uh, trainings given. So uh, interesting for this slide, if you want to know how to uh, have uh, aqua culture farm, uh, you want to grow, uh, say, prawn, uh, you can always go to the Fishery Research Institute and they will give you all the uh, maybe training as well up to the level of harvesting. And also same thing with uh, Mardi, they are big on uh, helping, uh, say, uh, plantation. Uh, you want to grow, say, uh, Harum Manis uh, mango in Perlis, say, your town is, uh, your kampong is from Perlis. So the Harum Manis mango only, uh, as far as I know, grows there. Uh, so you can learn from Mardi how to grow in acres of your land, uh, growth of uh, Harumanis mango for sales. Uh. So in uh, conclusion, we have learned a lot. Uh, this slide, uh, this uh, uh, topic or you know, the uh, lecture has many slides and uh, it has been uh, quite a lot to cover. Uh, so uh, to conclude, we need to understand uh, there's a lot of law and regulation. You break it, uh, you will be penalized. But the need of the law is important because uh, uh, otherwise uh, uh, everywhere there will be business and some could be going to the extent of cheating the customer uh, because of uh, not following the guidelines uh, put in the act. Okay, So that's why acts are coming about. Law and order need to be there. And then uh, to consider business infrastructure, you must have all the basic uh, amenities like uh, electricity, water, internet, all that. So that's been supported by the government as well. Uh, but uh, on your own also, you can make effort uh, to put these amenities in place. And then um, try not to have, avoid legal conflict because uh, not only you will end up in jail, uh, need to pay summon, but you can also end up uh, endangering lives of your workers. So ensure you follow the rule and regulation. And uh, to start up the uh, company uh, or manufacturing plant or service uh, companies, it's uh, not uh, to have so much anxiety because a lot of financial assistance is given by either government agencies or uh, private entities like uh, uh, banks and also uh, credit companies. But try to avoid uh, uh, illegal uh, money providers like Along or whatever. Okay, so with that, I conclude this uh, lecture.